again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In today's video, what we're going to do is an initial thoughts and comparison of the original SPQR uh, Miniatures game compared to the new revised edition that just came out. Uh, okay, so we're going to do like a cosmetic review, but we're also going to review some of the rules changes uh, that I noticed. Uh, there might be more. Uh, this is not a deep dive. This is kind of an initial impression because I just got this book last night. Okay, first of all, it looks like just casual glance. There's more contrast in this picture uh, than this one. This one has a little bit darker lines. Just something cosmetic. Okay, uh, it says Warbands Combat in the Ancient World up here on the top where now it says it on the bottom, no big deal, because they put revised edition right there. Uh, they also added death or glory up here. I don't know why they did that. That was unnecessary. Uh, okay. Same pictures, same scenarios, same factions. Uh, same text. Everything is the same in the back. Okay. Uh, except they moved Warbands down here, moved the picture up a little bit, and then said Revised Edition. Okay. And Death or Glory. Okay. So I don't necessarily want to go page by page, uh, but let's take a well, first of all, I want to know, I want you to know that I had certain dislikes with the original rules and my dislikes were not typographical errors or uh, misspelled words or anything like that. I had no problem. Even if, even if there were some in here, I didn't really notice them. And I know there were some people out there that were pretty anal about it and got upset. Oh, they misspelled this word or they used these two words. I didn't care about any of that. Uh, I'm more of a, I, I understood what the, what the meaning of the rules were. You could, you could understand the rules. There was no, it wasn't convoluted or complicated. There was no problem at all with these rules. I loved these rules. I still love these rules. Um, the problem that I had with this set of rules, which uh, were very few, but one of them was the Spartans. They made the Spartans out to be way too powerful. Uh, mainly, their wounds. Uh, they gave their Spartan warriors two wounds, where no one else had two wounds. Just the Spartan warriors. Uh, that's kind of cool. Makes them like superhuman it makes them twice as good uh, than any other troop in the revised edition I kind of glanced over it and I noticed I didn't see any Spartans with two wounds they all had one wound I'm relieved so there's no min maxing I'm going to play Spartans because they are way better than anybody else uh, they still might be based on the other stats, like armor and to hit and stuff like that. But at least they're not supermen. Okay, not with two wounds. Uh, other, another th change that I noticed was combat. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But the uh, in the old rules, in, in these rules, uh, you would have like a 10-man warband or not a warband warband is your entire army so you would have like a 10-man mob a squad whatever you want to call it and uh it would engage with another 10-man squad uh but only their first two figures would touch the other figures were too far back uh on both sides it didn't matter everybody attacked and everybody defended and it was uh it was a little abstract in that what they're saying was, or what they were saying was that once you engage, 
it becomes a swirling mess and everybody gets to fight where uh, they rescinded that rule and they said only the models that touch are the ones that contribute dice into something called a dice pool. You roll your dice pool and that goes against every model that is touched. The other side, their models that are in contact have their own dice pool and they roll back. And if you have two different types of units, like let's say some archers and some spearmen, uh, you separate the dice pools. So the archers would have their own dice pool and the spearmen would have their own dice pool and the opponent that's hitting both of them, only the models going up against the spearmen would roll against the spearmen. And only the models going up against the archers would roll their dice pool against the archers. Way less complicated. That is, that's pretty much easy as you can get. Okay. And it's still, may, and it, to me, that's realistic. That's not, maybe not realistic. I mean, it's dice, but it's, it's more palatable. I can absorb that better. I can, I can explain it at a tournament better, or I can, uh, there's no room, there's no wiggle room for error. You know, if a champion is engaged by two guys, then the champion gets his dice pool and those two guys are the only two that get to roll against the champion. So, and the champion only gets to kill those two guys. I think that's, that's crazy good. That's the way it should be. Okay, where in the old rules, you would remove casualties from the back, maintaining contact up front. That's, that's from what, my understanding, that's no more. That's not the way it is. All right, so let's break these rules open and just see if there's any changes on the charts. Okay, the first thing I want you to see is inside cover, right? The inside cover, the revised edition, has the reference charts. Inside cover does not have the reference charts. You have to flip to the next page. Even then, there's no reference charts. Hold on, I, th I thought there was reference charts up front. Oh, there's not. Okay, so you go all the way to the back and you get the rules reference. Rules reference inside chart, inside cover, rules reference inside back cover. That's not too bad of a deal because uh, there's only like one page of rules reference uh, and it's not like you're going to cut the cover to get, uh, to get to the reference. But in the revised edition, it's just right there in the inside of the front. Let's see what the inside of the back has to offer. A warband record sheet. This didn't have that. No warband reference sheet at all. Okay, so they utilized the inside and back of the reference, I mean of the cover for those reference sheets. Okay, that's good. Let's keep going. Now, I'm not going to be able to, like I said, I'm not going to be able to do every single page. Okay, introduction, miniatures, it all looks the same. Introduction, miniatures, needed for play, rolling dice, pre-measuring. Uh, you can always pre-measure, that's the same. Uh, measurements, front-facing. Hero stats are the same. Move, range, melee, melee dice, agility, bravery, armor, wounds, same. Pictures, layout is pretty much the same. Uh, as we're going through, I do want to point out that I think that Warlord Games has outdid themselves. Um, I can't say this enough. I said this in another video that Warlord didn't have to print a second copy of the rules. They could have just put out an errata that you could download or print out yourself on a PDF or something like that. Um, and they didn't just, they decided not to do that. 
they decided to reprint the rules in its entirety. Now, now to be fair, Warlord might not have had any more copies of this, and they needed to reprint this anyway, so it would be better just to throw the additions into the book and reprint it. Okay, that's great. But they just they knew that there were some mistakes. They knew that this game had issues, and they heard the feedback. So they, they apologized, not actually coming out and saying, I'm sorry, but they apologized by saying, if you buy a, this book, we'll give you a box of free miniatures. That's pretty cool. That's not how they worded it either. They said, buy miniatures and get this book for free. But it's basically the same thing. Okay. So, turns and phases, cavalry minions, actions. They all look the same. Opposed checks, victory, movement. Okay, terrain, climbing, jumping, it's all the same. Shooting actions. Okay, now we're into we're into a little bit of combat, so there might yep, there's some changes here. Okay, here's some changes. They flipped this, it looks like. Uh, now they go simple maneuvering will not win you a battle. Okay. This is the old rules. Okay, there's a paragraph, this line difference. A unit may not, okay, old. This unit may not choose to perform a shoot action if an enemy unit is in close combat with it. A unit with no range score may never perform a shoot action. New. A unit may not choose to perform a shoot action if already locked in close combat with an enemy unit. It does not say that second sentence. A unit with no range score may never perform a shoot action. It doesn't say that. What does that mean? Because <laughs> if you don't have a ranged score, how can you shoot? Okay, unless you pick up a ranged weapon or something, maybe. Okay, this rule is saying if you pick up a ranged weapon, you can't never shoot. Okay. Uh, Gives the javelin as an example, has the same stats, range, special rules, line of sight, range. Okay, so all that, everything's the same except for that one little sentence. Okay. Making a ranged attack. Oh, it's because they put a bigger picture in this one than in this one. It's a different picture, so they shuffled where the words are. Okay, so they added something here. Okay. Once you make a selected, range attack go through... following steps perform the following steps attack a unit with range for every model in the unit that's making the range attack okay this is reworded this is the attacking unit makes a range attack for every model in the unit that is making each attacking model must be within range and have line of sight to at least one enemy model in order to make its range attack the new one says the acting unit for every model in the unit making a ranged attack, each successful ranged check causes one hit. That's not what this says. Okay. But they're just letting you know, they're breaking it down, saying if you make a ranged attack, it does a, it does a hit of damage. For each hit, it makes an armor check. This one says... For every six, wait, every die that scores a six or more is a successful attack. However, these dice may be modified. This just says for each hit, it makes an armor check.
And then at the bottom it says a one is always a fail and a six is always a success. It doesn't say that a six is a hit, even though we know in the game you're always trying to get a six. Where does it say that? Checks. If the final check is a six or more, the check has succeeded. Okay, so that's, it kind of gives a broad explanation of checks up here. But here it breaks it down and says you need a six. Okay. They got rid of that because, you know, it was uh, unnecessary. And then there's range attack modifiers. This is a table, a chart, where this is in text. Target at long range, minus one, same thing. Target is a large unit, plus one, same thing. Okay. Then it has a whole thing here about large units in the old rules. The new rules doesn't even say that. It just says if it's got 10 or more models. Removing casualties. Okay, it doesn't talk about removing casualties over here. It just says armor and cover. This is cover and shooting. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about armor until way later in the rules. Where right here it says making a range attack, roll the hit, roll the armor, take the wound. Okay, so that's streamlined. Just makes it easier. Range attack model. Okay, removing attack. When a unit loses its wounds, dead models should be removed starting from those closest to the attacking unit. Well, in range attacks, that's always been the way. Each model in the unit will have one wound, and so you remove one model for every wound. In cases where models in the units have more than one wound, you try to remove complete models, any wounds that are left over, because there's not enough to remove a model, is noted. So, uh, that's a holdover from Spartans. Because <laughs> nobody else had two wounds, except for champions. Okay, cover. Cover. The same. Light cover. It doesn't say what light cover. It, yeah, it does. Minus one penalty. It includes it in the same paragraph. This puts it in a separate paragraph. Heavy cover puts the minus one in a separate paragraph. Puts it in the same paragraph. Okay, so far so good. It's not much. There's... The intent of the rules are the same. It's just the way it's laid out. Uh, melee actions, characteristics, special rules. Okay. The old one, it just said fighting and melee actions, skilled fighters, large units, and armor. Now it says melee dice pool. Like, remember, I was talking about pools. Multiple units in close combat. Model the different characteristics. I already went over all that. Okay, it doesn't really say, this says multiple units in close combat is one little paragraph. It says that it can happen. And then fights are using normal rules. That, that was vague. Where this one, it broke it down into the, the different types of categories. Multiple units, different characteristics, the way you break down the pools. And we make a melee attack... Uh, go through these steps. Every model on both attacking units fight, and that's not the case anymore. Both units make melee checks for each die in the unit's melee dice pool. And that's determined by how you generate the dice pools. Each hit makes an armor check. If it's not saved, it's a wound. Pretty straightforward. Same as archery, right? Removing casualties. In the chaos of close combat, eager warriors quickly step up to fill the gaps. Wounds are lost and casualties removed just as in the shoot action. However, models closest to the attacking unit are not necessarily immediately removed. Instead, a different model from the same unit is potentially removed first. 
Okay, I'm glad it said potentially. For each dead model, remove a model from the unit with the same characteristics. Okay. See, so you you stay in combat because there is a swirl. You do remove from the back, but you remove, but only if he has the same characteristics. Okay, I, li I like it. So far, so good. Ongoing. One side, okay, one side is killed. Wait, wait, wait. If both units still stand, says the exact same thing. Okay, one side, right. Fleeing. Fleeing. That's different. Oh, this is longer. Okay. A player may decide that a unit is no chance. Old. When locked in close combat, you may choose to perform a move action. However, before your unit can move, the enemy unit in contact gives it a round of combat. Tax of opportunity. Same thing as Dungeons Dragons. If it survives, it can continue to move. So, you just turn and run. You may choose to perform a movement action. This one says, a player may decide that his unit has no chance. When locked in close combat, the unit may still perform a move action to flee. However, before the unit can move, every enemy model in contact gets around. However, the fleeing unit cannot attack back. Only the enemy unit gets a dice pool. It's just rewarded to fit into the new way it's worded. If it survives, then it can move. Okay, it's, it's basically exactly the same thing, but it's just worded with the dice pool. Cover and melee. Enemy units behind cover. Low wall. Hedge may impose, uh, may impose rerolls. Wait, this is worded differently. Old. An enemy dug deep into cover is hard to shift. If a unit moves to engage an enemy that's in cover, you may force it to re-roll an, any and all of its melee checks. Once the melee action has been completed, the attacker will not suffer this penalty for further melee actions. Basically, he's jumped into the cover. This one says, if a unit making a melee action moves to engage an enemy that's behind cover, low wall, or hedge, it may be impossible to move models into base contact. In such instances, any model within one inch of the enemy, okay, didn't even mention that over here, is considered to be in base contact. However, the unit making the current melee attack suffers a minus one to their melee checks due to the imposing cover. That says reroll. This says minus one. That's a big difference. That's a big change. Okay, once the initial melee action has been completed, then he's in cover. Okay, so they jump in with him. Special actions. Special actions are used. Okay, great. Oh, wow, doesn't even go into it. Special actions are used when a unit does something well special. <laughs> it gives an example. There are special cases. A special action may only be used to do one thing. For example, a unit may not use a single special action to use a complex weapon and sabotage an objective. This would require two separate special actions. Okay. This says special actions are used like hiding. Okay, it talks about, it talks about um, the same sabotage and using a weapon, but it doesn't have hiding. Hiding is not there anymore. It's disappeared. Old had hiding. A unit behind or within cover can hide, taking two consecutive special actions in the same phase. When you try to draw a line of sight to it, if it's hiding, you can't. Okay. For this one, there's no hiding, which is good. Hiding is bullshit anyway. Okay, next thing, trouble in Gaul. Okay, that's a scenario. Uh, I'm not going to really dig too deep into the scenarios because that's just, that could be changed on the fly. Okay, so 
with the basic rules, what do we get? We got dice pools, no hiding, the wording is done a little bit differently, and cover doesn't give re-rolls, it gives a minus one to hit. Okay, and only base to base actually contribute to the dice pools. Okay, so far so good. Now we're in advanced rules. Different pictures. Now, this book is, both books are 50 pages of rules. in 150 pages of army lists. Okay, so just just throwing that out there. Okay. Challenges. I don't see challenges. I don't see challenge. Oh, wait, challenges is way down here. Hold on. They just re reordered it. Cuz they've got charging up here and then they've got charging over here. They got challenges over here. They got challenges over here. Okay. Charging. They actually put a diagram in the old book explaining charging. They took that diagram out because it was probably no need. Let's see what it says. If when a moving unit, wait, if when moving a unit into close combat, all your models are able to move in a straight line before contacting the enemy, you will gain a bonus for charging, reflecting momentum. They will gain the lethal special rule. All your units must move at least three inches straight. This one says, if all models moving into base contact with an enemy unit move at least three inches, then the unit is considered to have been charged. All the melee dice in a charging unit melee dice pool gains lethal. If they already have lethal, then add one to their lethal score, making it a lethal plus one. And you can't charge if you're already locked. So basically, as long as you move at least three inches, you're considered charging. You get the lethal. And again, remember, only the models. This says if the unit. Yeah. It's just worded a little bit differently, but it basically means the same thing. Okay. Dual weapon fighting. Old rules. A unit using two weapons can't use a shield. Okay, it stops right there. A unit with two close combat weapons obviously cannot use a shield, period. This says if you use two combat weapons, you can't use a shield during melee. However, you can still use it during the shoot action. Okay. Falling. I don't care about that. Heroes joining units. Uh, that's in the new rules. It's not in the old rules. Okay, let's jump to challenges because that is in the old rules. Heroes meet on the battlefield. Hero making melee attacks. Wow, they, they put a lot into it heroes making challenges in the uh, new rules. Okay, that's a lot to read, but it is twice as much text as the old rules. Okay, I'm just going to skip over that because I want to make this video a little bit quick. This is supposed to be initial impressions, not a deep dive. This has hit and run, no more hit and run. But it does have heroes joining you can join a single unit by taking a move action. A hero is part of it. Subsequent, a hero will abide by special rules possessed by a unit. However, it does not pass any special rules. On. And it's long. Does this have a hero joining? This has leading units. Okay. It's just rewarded. Leading units, heroes joining units. They're very similar. Like this one says you can leave a unit at the start of the phase. This says you can leave a unit at the start of the phase. 
by performing a move action and moving further than one inches away and subsequent, yeah, so this gives more explanation of each of these bullet points. Okay, great. Okay, now, now there is hiding, but it's as part of the advanced rules. Yeah, same thing. So hiding is the same. It's just part of the advanced rules. Hit and run is here, where hit and run was there. Pretty much the same. Okay, this has a thing for large units. Each model in the unit gains plus one modifier to their melee checks. And you get a plus one to their will to fight checks. In addition, certain special rules like phalanx, shield wall, testudo, strength in numbers. Doesn't even talk about that over here. Stunning. This is a very vague paragraph. Some weapons can stun. Over here it says several weapons can stun, but what does that mean? A unit will lose an action from their next phase for every stun it suffers. Until it can perform an action, the unit counts as rolling a 1 for every agility, ranged, and melee check. Wow, that's automatic failure. Okay. Now this has weapon special rules. Doesn't talk about weapon special rules. Uh, they call them special traits. No, that's a trait. That's not a weapon special rule. Okay, so it's juggled a little bit. Will to fight. Pretty big area. Voluntary retreat. I don't see that anywhere over here. I see weapon special rules. And this says special traits. Looks the same because it's two-handed, smasher, slow, short, block, interact. Okay, this doesn't have block. This is block. What is that? For each X score of a block, you can force your opponent to reroll a single melee or range attack during an action. So like the old shields would have these uh, parry, right? They used to call it parry. In this one, they call it block. Parry X, block X. Same thing. Lethal, slow, very long. I'm sure they're all the same. Okay. And then the old rules go into phalanx. Using a phalanx, facing, movement, shoot, melee actions, defense. Okay, this is this defense is a little different than this defense. Okay, let's take a look. Phalanx old plus one bonus to bravery, plus one bonus to bravery, plus one to all armor checks. That's no more. Uh, enemy units in the phalanx front suffer a minus one ranged and melee. Enemy units in the phalanx front suffer minus one to their melee. Okay, so they got rid of the minus one for missiles against phalanxes. And they got rid of the plus to armor while in phalanx. Okay, breaking a phalanx, same. Okay, they made phalanx a little bit. They nerfed phalanx just a little bit. Okay, close combat weapons. Axe, club, dagger, fist, feet, great axe, large club. That's all exactly the same. Uh, and 
Yeah, weapons are the same. Ranged weapons. 2010, 3010, lethal, one shot. Okay. Slow. Okay. Does slow mean the same thing? Remember slow? Some weapons are difficult to use, require reloading every shot. Before a shoot action is performed, a special action must be taken in the same turn immediately beforehand. Right. That's the way I interpreted these rules. But a lot, what I saw a lot of people doing was moving and reloading and then shooting and moving. And you can't do, you were splitting it between turns. Where the rule states, even in the old rules, it's just not clear. In the same turn, you basically can't move. You have to reload and shoot. You're done. Okay. Equipment. Looks the same. Equipment. Looks pretty much the same. I mean, just casual glance, it looks the same. Heroes look the same. XP needed looks the same. Modifiers chart looks the same. Okay, now we're starting to get into campaigns, minions, injuries. I don't care about any of that. I'm just going to jump into a couple of army lists. I'm sure that they're all a little bit different. And what I'll probably do for you is uh, go through the army list. I promised to do that a long time ago and never did it. Uh, but... What I'm going to do is, as I build my armies for SPQR, I think I'm going to explain uh, the army lists. Uh, skipping over the talents, because there's a lot of those. And uh, those, those are great for your generals and stuff. Might have to do a video on that. Uh, but remember, this I don't want this to be a deep dive. I just wanted this to be a casual glance over. Uh, I'm glad they kept with the maps and the society and military service, courts, appearance, their equipment, their shield. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just looking at maybe Athens, Rome, Sparta. That might be the only ones I look at. Athens, heroes, old and new, looks the same. Cavalrymen changed. Okay. And their denarii went up. Whoa. This went from a two dice melee to a one die melee, and the denarii went up. Oh my gosh, the hero's denarii went down. This was 50, this is 40. But the swords are cheaper. This is three for a sword, two for a sword. Okay, so they've really went through the army list. I'm not going to go through every figure. The hoplites, more expensive, 14. Dice went down to only one, where this had two dice. Hmm. Archer had one, Archer has one. Okay. Ten denarii went down to seven denarii. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to skip over to, there's Britain... Caesars, Romans. Give me just a regular legionary. There you are. What page is that? 82. It might be the same. 82, legionary. There we go. 24, 24. Perfect. Two dice, one die. Okay, so they're nerfing the dice for attacks. Armor is the same. Plus three. Bravery, agility, all that's the same. The Pila, the sling. Okay, the slings are more expensive. Whoa. The standard here was 25 denarii. Or over here it is 5. <laughs> wow. So what they're saying is that standard isn't worth 25 points. It never was. Okay. Cool. That's cool. Julius Caesar went from 180 to 159. 
stats went from plus three armor to plus four armor. Oh my gosh, he's got a lot more armor. Okay, and he's cheaper. Okay, let's go to Sparta. Yeah, Sparta. And, well, I'd like to look at Macedonia. That's another of my fav faves. You got Persia in here. I don't remember Persia being in here, but it's in here. Seven, 176 in the new book. One seventy six in the old book. Okay, the pages page numbers are pretty similar. Okay, cost went up. Okay, the hoplite twelve old, fifteen new. Wait, hold on. This says one wound. This says one wound. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Just standard hoplite. Okay, let's take a look at the standard hoplite. There he is. He was 24 points. Same as a Roman. And now he's 26 points. A little bit more than a Roman. He was two wounds, but now he's one wound. He had two melee dice. Now he has one melee dice. But everything else is the same. Oh, okay. It cost quite a bit to give him Linothorax or Kuros. That was 10. It's only th two now. So if you want to, because Spartans didn't always have armor, but if you wanted to give him armor, it's not that expensive. Aprons for one, aprons for two, swords for free. Used to cost three for some reason. But now I can have it for free. Horn for 10. Now horn is for 10. Okay. And they had a fearsome reputation. They now have a fearsome reputation. They didn't have that before. Yeah, they got a new ability. Okay. I'm okay with that. The fighting process of this unit is legendary, such as the reputation. Lesser men fear them. Blah, blah, blah. During the first melee action, an enemy model in base contact with this unit is a minus one to their melee check. However, while locked in combat, this modifier is not applied. And if the other unit has fearsome reputation, then it doesn't suffer either. Okay, so that gives them a little bit of a bonus, but not something that breaks the rules. Okay. Yeah, they have the phalanx, they have the will to fight. Okay. Yeah, so it's a little subtle on the uh, on the um, army lists. They went through, it looks like they went through and fixed a lot of things in the army lists. I'm super excited. I want to put together a uh, an Athena an Athens, I want to put an Athens warband together. I want to put a Roman warband together, a Macedonian warband. Uh, those are the warbands I'm looking forward to putting together right away. I might put together something else too, but uh, I'm going to have to go through the army lists and basically see what all the differences are. Um, I don't really dwell on the point values or the, you know, the the pluses and the minuses, but um, I know that there are a lot of players out there that are min-maxers, and they have to get the best army for the best amount of points. Uh, that's not me. I, I just like to buy, like, historically accurate armies and stuff that I think I'm going to have fun playing, you know? Um, yeah, so... That's me. All right, so thanks for coming out and checking out this uh, first impression rules comparison. Uh, I know this was asked for on my channel. A lot of people asked for it. Um, 
maybe as I read the rules a little bit more thoroughly, if I come up with or if I find anything that's really heinous or sticks out, I'll be sure to let you know. Uh, okay, final thoughts. Final thoughts. You can get this free on my channel, my eBay store, if you order one of the new box sets or one of the one of the SPQR box sets. Um, one per customer and one per address. So if you order a box, uh, drop a message. Well, it'll be it'll fully explained on the uh, on my eBay store. But I'm gonna I'm gonna sell a box set. You'll get this rule book for free while supplies last, which basically means the first five customers. And uh, yeah, I look forward. Now, after maybe a month, you know, like at the end of April, I'm going to just stop giving these free with the box sets. And then I'm going to sell them just like a normal rule book. So take advantage of that while you can. Uh, all right. Well, I will see you in the next video.